Are you tired of spending your time and money chasing strategy after strategy only to discover what worked 10, 5, or even 2 years ago is not working now? Things shift fast in the online space, and if you're not keeping up, you're getting left behind. It's time for something different. Welcome to the Marketing, Media, and Money Podcast, where every single episode will be jam-packed with proven, profitable strategies, behind-the-scenes secrets, and what's working now resources. From industry experts and global influencers to help you scale your business, shorten your learning curve, and stand out in a crowded, noisy marketplace. And now, your host, award-winning marketing and media strategist and international speaker, Patty Farmer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Marketing Media Money Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Farmer, and I'm looking forward to sharing today's industry expert with you. And today, we have quite the expert with us, somebody that I personally adore. Every time I have a conversation with her, I learn something, and I feel like every time we have a conversation, it's like money in the bank for me. So get your pen and paper out, because I think the same thing is going to happen for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to step in your spotlight and expand your influence. So, of course, influence, income, impact. So we're going to be talking today with Colleen Biggs. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Colleen is an award-winning peak performance business consultant with over 18 years of experience. She's launched over 340 businesses. That's right, 340 businesses. She's an international speaker, a number one international best-selling author, CEO of three businesses, including Lead Up for Women, a community of thousands of female entrepreneurs that are driven by their passion, support, and promoting others with purpose to fuel female voices with power that are leading the way for all women worldwide to dominate the entrepreneurial market. And that excites me. And thank you so much for being here with me today, Colleen. Thanks, Patty. I'm so honored. And I feel like you're like that driving force that dominates the female entrepreneur market. Thanks. Yeah. That's why I love talking with you on the phone and being on Zoom and having all this time with you as well. So I love it. So let's dive right in. So I have to tell you, 340 businesses, that's pretty impressive. You and I have spoke on summits before. We're going to be speaking again together in just a few months. So that's kind of exciting. We're Actually, I think every conversation we have, we find just another way for us to be doing things together. So I love that. So let's kind of dive in first to talk a little bit about your journey. I mean, like you have achieved a lot and that makes me really happy. And I love the way you are leading the way for women to use their voice and to dominate. I love that. Right. So I think that is really great. But you didn't wake up one day and decide to do that. That had to kind of give you some type of aha moment or some type of wake up that you just said, you know what? This is what I know I was meant to do. And this was my purpose. Tell us a little bit about that story of that journey and what that moment was for you. Yeah, thanks. You're right, Patty. I didn't come out of the womb that way. You know, we've all grown. And for me, as I look back now, you know, I had a pretty chaotic childhood, uh, divorced parents, uh, very abusive father. And I really was thinking as I was being raised that I was supposed to find, you know, the knight in shining armor was going to come on his horse. I was going to get married, have babies, the whole deal. And boy, that just ripped out from underneath of me when I was 12. And I really realized at that moment that I needed to create whatever it was in my life that I needed. I needed to create that. I couldn't wait for somebody else to create that. And I'm so thankful that these, I don't want to call them hard times, but that these gifts uh, in my life were given to me because I learned how to do a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have learned how to do. May I have been raised differently in a different family. So I would have been a very independent female, very driven, very independent female. And it really started at that age of 12. I was on my own at 17. I never looked back, never took a handout from parents, any of that from that point forward. But 
you know, I always had this kind of mentality from my dad saying, she's not worth $100 a month. And I had to combat that for a long time. And I had this thing with money. And I think a lot of women fall into this category. They have this tug of war with money that has to do with feeling they're not worthy enough to be asking for money for certain things that they have to give it away. And that is really down the path that has like brought lead up for women into birth. So when I was in corporate America, there was a lot of female competition, a lot of judgment. I really was not happy with that type of environment. There were very few females that didn't feel that way. Uh, But the more you climb the corporate ladder, the more you saw that because the smaller the opportunities were for women, there'd be one seat or two seats. So instead of, (laughs) if you're lucky, and I was in the good old boys club, let me tell you. So if you didn't band together to create additional space for women, then it was just who gets the one spot and everyone would fight for it. And I, You know, for me, it was like, I would find if you really need it that bad, you can have it. But this is the way I felt. I used to keep my head down. Like you said, I've been very successful over the years. I've really honed in great skills on launching businesses and helping people do that very successfully. So I didn't do that. You know, they say no I in team. I was just all about the team. I was all about pushing forward about, you know, helping these business owners create their dreams and you know, invest in them. That was where I was. I was in the trenches with them. So I didn't look up that often to realize what was happening around me in my environment. But when I did, I realized like, wait a minute, I'm so good at what I do. They're never going to move me out of here. This is like, I'm like the money right here, right? So I thought, you know, what I need to do is I need to step in the spotlight and make it all about me because there is an I in this team here. And in corporate America, they don't want you to really stand out. I needed to stand out. So I just decided, hey, I'm going to me, 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 check me out. This is what I've done. This is what I can do. This is what I've done for the company. And this is where I want to go. And when I spoke up and said that, they were like, oh, we had no idea. And then all of a sudden, my career catapulted. So I originally built Lead Up for Women to help women catapult their careers in corporate America. That's where it started. And then I caught the eye of female entrepreneurs. And they were like, how do we get on these platforms to utilize these platforms to get visibility? Because the one biggest thing we're struggling with is visibility. We need to be seen and we need to be heard. So that was when I started creating additional platforms within the organization lead up for women for them to be able to get the visibility to attract their clients. You know, one of the things that we have spoken about that I really love is You know, sometimes women, they wait for somebody to give it to them. They don't go get it, right? They think that they need to just wait for somebody to hand it to them. Or, you know, women, I mean, hey, that's every woman I know, every single woman I know tells me how much they love community, like all of that, because we do, we crave it, we need it, but yet they can be catty. (laughs) They can be catty. And here's what I'm going to say. We talk all the time about having an abundant mentality, right? Don't have a scarcity mentality. But here's what I have found. So of course, being in marketing, I pay attention to data and I pay attention to behaviors, right? And sometimes they don't match, right? Mm -hmm. For what people think that they do. And here's one of the things that I would say, and it is this, that I believe that if you ask someone, especially a woman, do you have an abundance mentality or a scarcity mentality? 90% of women will tell you they have an abundance mentality. They don't always, but they think they do. It's one of those things that we want to have. We want to be able to do it. It's kind of one of those things you don't always know about yourself right away and stuff until the competition comes out. And then all of a sudden. So one of the things that I love about you is that we share this vision of understanding that people who do what we do as well, or overlap in some way, are the best people that you can work with and collaborate with because they get it, right? And you can't, you're not the expert at not just what you do and everything about it, right? Because both you and I, we're not just experts, we're the authorities. We're authorities in what we do, right? But you serve women, entrepreneurs, small business owners, your vision for what you want, We have a shared vision, but our road to how we're 
doing that vision is not the same. And that is where we get to work together. Like when I first met you and we got together, we were on the that Zoom first Zoom call. It was like, wow, like you have a magazine. I have a magazine. You do this. I do that. We're both speakers. We're both authors. We both serve the same people. But as we dug deeper, we realized that we serve the same audience. And for a lot of women mm -hmm. who don't have a CEO mindset, that's what I call that. They don't have a CEO mindset. The reality really is what they do is that they can't handle that. Mm -hmm. For me and for you, one of the things that I love about it is that one of the things I have to tell you, you have nailed really well is it's like, that's really, really great. Now, how can we use those assets to help support each other? Because if you're helping thousands of entrepreneurs and business owners, and I'm helping thousands of entrepreneurs and business owners, what could we do together if we could shine the spotlight on each other's community? And what could we really do there? And I have to tell you, and to tell the audience, like, man, like, get ready, because Colleen and I've got some exciting things that we're, we're thinking about doing, but I love the way you do that. So Going a little bit deeper, I really want to talk about some of the ways that I feel like you have really led, you know, really obviously lead up for women, but where you really led that and where you're doing it differently and really what I love. So one of the things I love is that you have a membership. And when people think membership, you know, a lot of times people will think about a gym membership, you know, the never, never plan for paying this, you know, and you never go to the gym and you pay it right. You know, that's kind of old school. Or people will even think about some of the things that you know. I have to tell you, Colleen, I have never seen anyone who constantly is always looking for new ways to spotlight their members. And truly, like it's called a membership site, but for you, it should be called a community site <laughs> because it is so much more than a membership. I mean, I joined, I joined right away, and you know, and I saw the benefit. It's like, oh, what could we do together? So I think that what you're doing there is really important. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So what made you decide that the membership model was the way to go? And did you get the vision early on and understand that it would end up being thousands of women? Or in the beginning, were you thinking that, oh, I was going to build this community and it was going to be really great? Did you get the big, big vision or did it kind of expand? Well, I want to go back first because you said something and it just got glassed over very quickly, which you said it should be called a community site. And I just want all of the listeners to take note of that because I get these little bits of advice from Patty all the time. This is why we love to talk because I said, my magazine is a downloadable magazine. I never even thought about having it be a subscription. Thank you, Patty. I'm going to switch it over to be a subscription. Patty and I have been going back and forth with advice, and she just said, it should be called this. I'm a promoter. Patty is a marketer. There's a big difference between those two things. And that's why we complement each other so well, because even though you're getting visible, you're being seen, and you're being promoted, how do you market that? There's this marketing that needs to go along with that for you to be seen and be heard even more and to keep that visibility and exposure heightened, right? So when I built this, I built it a number one, knowing it needed to be a membership site. And why it needed to be a membership site was because I was going to offer specific things that the members would receive, right? The magazine, and they would get a Thrive Thursday spotlight. They would get discounts to that year when we launched it. We were doing in-person luncheons that were in 10 different cities in 10 different states. I remember someone asked me, so are you anywhere other than Arizona where you live? And I was like, no, I'm national. I, and then I sat back and I thought, I never even thought about starting in my own state. I just immediately started national and was like, we're going to take this thing national. And I knew people because I had cultivated relationships in all cities and states. And they trusted me. They knew me. We did business together in the past. So when I told them I was starting this, Everyone jumps on for their purpose, right? So they might jump on because they just want the community and they want to be able to come to the free events every week and they want to be able to connect with the other women or share information on Facebook. Some of the women are on because they want the spotlight. They want to be in that spotlight. They want to be in that spotlight every second that they get. Patty, you're that way. Like, 
Tell me all the member benefits. I'm booking all my interviews right now. This is what I recommend to everyone when they become a member. Book all of your spotlights now throughout the year. Book them. And so I had a vision from the very beginning. And my vision was really large. It still is really large. I really see Lead Up for Women and the women that I meet and I'm collaborating with and everything in the charge that we're leading changes the blueprint for how women in business appear, what the research shows, what the current model shows. We have, we own more businesses than men. We are holding more positions than you know, 1% of Fortune 500 companies. Women bring a lot to the workplace and a lot for entrepreneurship. And so I really want to change the landscape for women forever and what that looks like. And I know, Patty, you and I and many other women that I work with will be women in history that are talked about, that are celebrated in March, that made a huge impact and a huge change. And I really feel that way. That's how big my vision is for what we can do. I love that. And I think that is really important. So now let's step back a second. So I love that you have a vision. Everybody else is not a visionary. I think the first time somebody called me a visionary, I was kind of taken back. Like I was like, oh, I wouldn't consider myself a visionary. And I kind of went to, you know, some of my friends and some of my clients. And I'm like, would you, somebody told me I was a visionary. I was like, oh my gosh, Patty, you are a visionary. Like I didn't, it took me a minute to step into that, right? To really understand it because it seems so big, right? You know, but once you broke it down, it's like, oh, I absolutely am, right? But we always have things that get in our way. And sometimes the thing that gets in our way is us, right? You know, so what would you say was the biggest obstacle or a blind spot or a roadblock that you had to overcome to get where you are now? Hmm, that is a good question. I think one of my biggest obstacles and roadblocks that I had to get over was in order to scale and build. And this is really hilarious that I'm saying this because you know how we can teach others, but we don't necessarily always model it because we're also in our own frames, just like everybody else is, was the ability to do it all, right? So when we're building our businesses, it is us and we do have the vision and we are building it. And Our responsibility is then to share that vision with others to get them to adopt that vision and want to jump on board. And you would be surprised at how many people want to serve, want to assist, want to help. And they sometimes don't even want anything in return. And I just, the biggest roadblock I run up against or had run up against for a long time was asking. So asking for help, asking for others to do things for me. And I think that is probably one of the biggest obstacles that women run up against on a regular basis. We're just so afraid to ask others. But if you don't ask, you don't get, period. Not only that too, but one of the things that I learned and I really have to work on it, to be totally honest, it's something I, I work on all the time, which is when you do for others, that's really great. I mean, you know, I love to serve others. It's fabulous. I love it. And it really makes me happy, feeds my soul. But one of the things is if you don't ever ask, you never give anybody else the opportunity to serve you. For as good as we feel when we serve, other people want to do that too. And we do people a disservice sometimes when we don't ask for help because they want to. Not only that, but sometimes people, if you've helped them, they'll stop asking because they feel like there's no way for them to reciprocate for you. So then the other disservice you do is you actually have other ways that you could serve them even more and they won't step into it because they feel like you've already done so much for them, right? You know, and you know, the whole way I build my business is I lead with contribution and I just know that compensation will follow, but I always lead with contribution. But I have had people say to me, no, Patty, like, what can I do for you? And I had to learn to allow myself to receive. Yes. It's a learned skill. People would ask me, what can I do for you? And I would say, frankly, I don't know. But but yet five minutes ago or an hour ago, I was drowning in things I had to get done because I couldn't figure out how to get it all done myself. So for sure, we need to learn to ask. That's a huge roadblock and we need to learn to receive. 
Absolutely. We need to learn to receive. So now when someone says, oh, I'd love to send you this, or I'd love to do this for you. I'm like, thank you so much. That is so kind. I accept, right? We just, I accept. That's great. And we allow other people to do that for us. Cause you're right. My heart is so full when people serve, when I serve others. And so it is wrong of me to block that from someone doing that for me. And we're only human, right? We're just human. So we do need help. And when I realized I had hit a point in my business where I knew that I needed to hire help, the minute I came to that decision and decided to bring someone on, it gets a little harder before it gets better because you now you're having to train someone and teach them how to do things. But by far, the very best decision I ever made. So for everyone listening, asking and then getting people on your team are probably the two biggest lessons that took me longer to learn than it should have with all my years of experience in teaching others to do that. I should have learned before then. (laughs) And not only that, I also think it's the thing that stops you from actually getting where you want to go and creating that income faster than you could have. You know, I always like to joke with my clients in a, well, not really joke, but in a joking way, said, you know, you got to stop licking your own envelopes, right? You know? So really it is about (laughs) working in your brilliance and then hiring other people to work in their brilliance, right? You know, I have to tell you about a year ago, I had a lesson that just slapped me in the face. Even when you think you know something, you're like, you're like, whatever. And basically somebody mentioned something to me that I could do. And I was like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. And so I went to my VA and I, who is amazing. She's been with me for like three years. And I said, I just found out that we could do this. And she's like, yeah. I said, did you know we could do it? She's like, I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? She's like, well, you didn't tell me to do that. And I was like, I can't do everything. I mean, like if, so to me, what that is, is I work hard, Colleen, hard on creating the right culture. I understand that I can't do everything. I want, and I'm always open to receive. My team knows I want for you to say, oh, have you ever thought about this? Oh, what if we could do this? Or what do you think about that? And the best things always come from everybody's ideas, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you have a virtual team or you do hire someone, you really do have to realize that sometimes when people do something to them, it's just like, oh, duh, right? You know, like they're just in it. Like think about how many things we do. And so they don't always know to tell you, right? And so I have had to learn that I tell my team that once a month, they've got to come to the meeting Everybody on my team has to have, I don't care if it's a bad idea, but I want an idea, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. and so I don't, you know, I'm paying you for your time. I don't care if you're searching something, you see something, you hear something, whatever. I don't even care if we say, oh no, that's not whatever. I want an idea. And I have to tell you, that is what keeps us going. Cause I have to tell you, I have what I always like to say that I have a white paper paralysis, right? If I look at a white paper, I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's like hard. But all you got to do is give me three lines. You just got to tell me something. And I'm like, oh, well, we could do this and we could do that and we could do this. So if people just bring things to the table, then the whole team gets talking. And by the time you're done in an hour, it's not that same little idea anymore. Now it's this whole big thing. And now we're going to launch it. We're going to do this and, and everything. So I think that it's like kids, you know, when we were kids, we dreamed, we always thought big and we did this and we did that and stuff. So I love that the way you have built this community for women and giving them a voice, that's part of what it is. You know, you talked earlier about how when you were growing up in your childhood, I was called Chatty Patty when I was growing up. My mom used to say, we'll give you $5, Patty, if you could just be quiet for 30 minutes. I never could, but I always felt my whole life that if somebody was shutting me up, like I never felt like I had a voice or that my voice mattered. And as a grown up, you know, once I grew up, I finally realized to myself, that that is just not true, you know? Right. And the more you do, like people say, oh, when is enough enough? My mom used to say that to me. When is enough enough, Patty, right? Well, it's, it's never enough for me because what more can I do? I always want to grow, right? But when you think about it and you're helping and you're giving a voice to women, you never know the amazing things or the change that's going to happen in those. I mean, you're cultivating thought leadership, you know, things that can change the game, right? You know, that's what I'm looking for. What's the game changer? 
I mean, that's a question I ask people all the time. Who's the one person I can introduce you to that'll be a game changer in your business this month, right? So you have this community of women and I love that. And that all started with having this membership site, right? And all these different things that you have. And here's one of the things that whenever I think about all that you have done in the different platforms, you know, I'm digging in there, looking at all the stuff that you get, it kind of reminds me of something so simple. Everybody has a different way that they like to take information, right? Some people like to read, some people want to watch videos, some people want to listen. So you need all those platforms to serve the greater amount of people because not everybody's going to want to take it the same way. Yeah. I have some women that just want to, they just want to join and they want to be able to, you know, read the magazines or they want to be able to join the book club for personal development. You know, this is a platform that I created that they get to take advantage of for personal development and growth. And I just got an email today, Patty, right before I jumped on here with you. And one of the ladies, uh, her name is Lori, who is in my book club. And she said, I just want to thank you so much for creating this platform of having the book club for personal development. I have been using, we've been reading the book. I don't even have it in front of me right now. We just I don't know, but I joined the book club and I just got my book for the one that starts May 6th. Okay, good. So that one we're going to be reading about how to be a badass and making money and the wealth mindset. But the last one we were reading is by Phil, and I can't remember his, I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What I remember about the book, it doesn't matter what the title is or anything. He gives you uh, quotes and ways to close the sale. It's all about closing the sale and ways to close the sale that you can adopt. And she said, I've been taking these quotes. I've been utilizing this in my business and have been gaining business from taking, because I would say every week, what did you use last week? Tell me what you used. How did it work? What resonated you? What fell flat? Who did you talk to? So books do nothing. I always say books do nothing for your development, nothing for your business if you don't apply what you read and learn. So this personal development book club that is just fun for some people to show up with a glass of wine or just show up or whatever they want to do. I take it serious. My reading every morning is for my personal growth, my business growth, my intellectual growth. It's for every growth of me possible. And I apply what I read. I go back and reread. I go back and, and highlight and make notes. Then we talk about it and someone else gets a different aha moment. It changes the direction for everybody in that club because they all apply it differently. But if I were to just say, hey, here's a great book. Go read this book. It does nothing. But when you purposefully bring people together and you say, let's discuss those two chapters. What did you get out of that? How did you apply that in your personal life? How do you, what has changed for you now? And how are you going to do things differently moving forward? If we're not willing to learn, then we're unwilling to lead. We have oh, I to be love to that. Learn. I love that quote. You know, I'm all about the quotes, right? So, oh, I love that quote. That is so fabulous. And I know you can't remember the book, but I'm going to want to put that in the show notes. So you're going to have to get that book for me. Because so, I know the audience out here is like, what, what, what? We want to know that book. So you're going to have to get that link for me. I make sure that I put it in the show notes because I know they're going to want to have it. So Colleen, you have done so much with all of these businesses and the way that you serve. And I love that about you so much. What are you loving the most about your business today? What I'm loving the most about my business today are the lives that I'm changing. I'm, it's like it's now coming to fruition and I'm hearing the women's feedback like Lori's today. Women will email me and tell me how much they enjoy being part of the community, what it has done for them, clients that they've signed on, that they've met through the community, through a networking event or because of a workshop. And then, you know, that I signed on a $9,000, you know, client today because of my workshop that I did in Lead Up for Women. It's real results. They're having real results. And they come back to me and say, thank you so much for introducing me to this event or this person or whatever it may be. I, it was just the most, I've never been surrounded by people like that. So I think for me, it really comes down to seeing the hard work. And when I say hard work, we're talking 
I was working in corporate and running this business at one time. So I was putting many, many, many hours in corporate while I was doing this late at night, early in the morning and weekends and building it and knowing that I was on the right path to make serious change in the lives of women. And it's, it's working. I love that. Thank you so much. So Colleen, before we wrap up, I think it's important to know what not to do as much as it is important to know what to do, right? Because sometimes we just stand in our own way, like we were talking, right? And so what would you say, so going back to this membership with all these things, what would you say are the biggest mistakes that you see women make when they spend their money? I mean, men do it too, but I mean, like we buy this, we join this, we become a member of this, we pay for all these things. What would you say are some of the mistakes? I want to make sure that everybody that's listening gets value out of this. So what would you say are some of the biggest mistakes and what can they do to fix those mistakes whenever they join something? Because like I know it's kind of like even when they join a Facebook group, like you join a Facebook group, you do this on LinkedIn and they just join and run, right? You know, like what would you say are key things to do pretty much in any type of thing that you join as a strategy and a way to monetize? Yes. that's what we want to know, right? So the biggest thing, the number one word, the biggest piece is engagement. And I have joined Facebook groups because someone's invited me and we really want you here, but it doesn't do anything for me. There's not a lot of engagement there. I don't, you know, I'm not getting anything at it. So I would say this, let's evaluate what you're part of right now. Are you getting a return from it? Are you not getting a return because you're not engaging? Do you have time to engage in it? So what is going to bring you the largest value? What tribe is your tribe? So find a tribe with like-minded women that are doing what it is that you want to be doing that are that is on your marketing plan for the year, right? How is this one group going to help you achieve your goals for the year? So you need to focus on that first. So how is it going to help you achieve your goals for the year? Then once you do join that group, Facebook group, membership site, whatever it may be, how is that fulfilling you and how are you engaging in that? How often are you engaging? What are you getting on a return on that? I'm part of a group called Foxy Women. I honestly have to tell you, the engagement is awesome. I can only go to one event that they have per month. I partner with her so that the women in Lead Up for Women will go to her events because it's a whole new group of women over there. I use that group as my friend connection and like my break. I honestly have to tell you, I love that group because it's just so relaxed and I love to just chill out in the group. And if I get a connection, great. If I don't, I just love the energy of the group. Well, I think that's important because we know yes. there's nobody that only does one thing. We don't network in just one place. We don't belong to just one thing. You know, that's a question I always ask them. If I'm in something and I love it, I always say, where else do you network that is getting you results? I ask that question, where else are you networking that you're getting results? You know, this year I made a big step definitely because of COVID and I just decided I, you know, we had more time. We're at home, you know, we're, I just looked at everything I was a part of and made the decision that I was going to cut how many things I was a part of in half but I was going to be more involved in the things, be more involved in the things I was in, but be in less of them. I think the thing that people like to do is like, oh my gosh, there's 80,000 people. Really? How many people are you going to engage with? There's 80,000. <laughs> so that's crazy. Uh, that's yeah. like people who just want to troll through groups, but I yeah. always say, you know, be in, you know, make sure it's your tribe. Like what you said, are they your people Be in less things show up? So you get noticed, right? You know, I think those are really, really important. I think it makes a lot of sense to be involved differently. Like there's a strategy to it for sure. Yeah. Right? But yeah. I love the way you said that about being in something else. I do that same thing too. And I love to introduce people from one to the other. Yeah. And I think that that makes a lot of sense. There's a group I'm involved with in California. One of their members lives in Philadelphia and they actually refer back and forth. And so their members join theirs and their members join theirs. And that's wonderful. I know you and I are doing a little bit of that with our stuff too. I think it makes a lot of sense. So it does. It makes a lot of sense. So if you're listening right now, I would say the main thing is make sure you're in the right tribe. Understand how it fulfills you. Like Foxy Women for me, it fulfills me socially, personally, right? 
That's how it fulfills me because I need that too. I'm a woman and I want that social interaction, especially because of COVID and we weren't able to get out much. I really needed that social time with them. Now, many of the other women might be in there for a different reason. That's why I'm there. When I see women that in Lead Up for Women, you know, come up on an annual enrollment renewal and they say, I don't want to renew my membership, usually that person I've not seen all year. And I'll say to them, I haven't seen you in one spotlight this year. And I know because I'm interviewing them. I haven't seen a magazine article. I haven't seen you on the podcast. I haven't seen you on a Member Monday Spotlight. So I usually send them the member benefits and say, did you know all this is available to you and you've not taken advantage of one thing this year? Let me tell you the results of what the women that are taking advantage of these spotlights are achieving. So unless you, if you're going to pay the money to be part of a group, then get the value out of that and engage. It could be a new person that you meet that opens up four more doors for you or introduces you to another person. Sometimes it's not even the spotlight you're in or the, what the one community does for you. It's a person you meet in the community. Oh, that does for sure. For Absolutely. They just, and I actually, I say that to people all the time when people are in my thing, you know, it's like, listen, I'll introduce you to other people who are involved in my community. But the greatest thing that I can do for you too is to introduce you to people in other communities that I belong to that you would have never met if I hadn't introduced you. Yeah. So it's always like the big picture and that's part of the visionary part, right? It's a big picture. So it's the big picture in the long game. Like I know a lot of people like the short game, but when you cultivate relationships and you have an abundant mindset, you are not afraid of competition. Competition is only a state of mind. I don't see any other women's organization out there and at all a competition of mine. I compliment them. They compliment me. And if they're scared of me, then I know they have a different mindset because that's not how it is. Oh, so, I, I agree with you. And that's kind of sort of what we were talking about in the beginning too. So Colleen, I know that you have a hard stop. I want to make sure I honor that for you. How can people connect with you? I know they're going to want to. So how can they do that? I made it easy for everybody. We are leadupforwomen.com. We're lead up everywhere. So lead up for women everywhere. Perfect. That's great. And you came bearing gifts too. So tell everybody about how they can get their hands on that magazine. Yeah, you just go to our homepage. The link is below and you can claim your free magazine. And this uh, issue, we have Nadine Joy on the front. I think you'll all love reading about her. She's a dear friend of mine that lives in Canada. And we spotlight women, you know, on the front of this magazine that have just amazing stories to tell. So please feel free to go in and read all of the sections that our members have written. And I wanted to let you know I found the book. So it's Exactly What to Say by Phil M. Jones. So the book we were talking about that has helped women in changing the way they close the sale is Exactly What to Say, The Magic Words of Influence and Impact by Phil Jones. Thank you so much. So this is the portion of the show I like to call it Hashtag open mic, my version of social karaoke, where I turn the mic over and I ask our guests, could you please share your number? I mean, you've been so generous with your brilliance, but what would you say is your number one marketing media money strategy? This is the biggest problem I have found with female entrepreneurs and probably why I'm in business today. They are not clear on the problem that exists for the solution that they have on how to solve it. So you do not have a business. You cannot make money unless a problem exists and you have a solution for the problem. So you have to get clarity on that and know that that exists. And if you don't have that, you can't market yourself, promote yourself. You can't do anything that we've talked about today until you are absolutely foundationally clear on the problem that exists and how you are solving it. Oh, I love that. That is fabulous. Thank you so much, Colleen, for being here with me today. I appreciate you so much. Ditto. I appreciate <laughs> you too, Patty. I just Thank love you. your brilliance and I love being around you. You make me a better person every time we talk. Oh, thank you. You just made my day. And thank you to our sponsor, the Exacta Corporation, developer of the Family Organizer Plus platform. For more information, check them out at exactacorp.com. And to the audience, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for joining us on the Marketing Media Money Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, and I am sure you did, please subscribe and review the podcast on your favorite listening platform. 
Thank you all so much for being here. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Marketing Media and Money Podcast. Until then, have a phenomenal day. Thank you for joining us today on the Marketing Media and Money Podcast. To shorten your learning curve even more, make sure to grab your free copy of the Marketing Media and Money magazine at www.marketingmediamoney.com. I promise your business will thank you.